welcome oh i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> my apologies i didn't okay. hear the music or whatever <laughs> so welcome friends <laughs> my apologies we were just talking about how as one gets older mind starts to slip um and I was a little distracted. So welcome. Happy to have you here. We are going to continue our journey on chapter 17. We did already verse 1. We're going to do verses 2 through 5 today. And last time, if you remember, um, Arjuna asked Krishna a question. And he said, what happens if somebody doesn't follow the scriptural ordinances in doing their worship, but does the worship of God and praise, but without strict scriptural um, dictates, but with a good deal of shraddha. Shraddha. And so what is shraddha? That's what we are going to be talking about for the next five verses. <clears throat> this is interesting. I just wanted to point out, this is a big debate in Western culture, at least here with Catholicism and stuff, because a lot of people who who had their struggles with Catholicism would often debate, can you have morality without religion? And this is, this is basically the same discussion here. Well, you know, maybe you can use this to then write some op-eds on it. Yeah, too. there you go. Yeah. All right. So verse two, Krishna says, the blessed Lord said, threefold is the Shraddha. Threefold. It is born of the nature of the embodied. What is the embodied? The embodied is the Atman within. It's embodied within your body. Threefold is the Shraddha, born of the nature of the embodied. It is Sattvic, it is Rajasic, or Tamasic, or a combination of those three. So this time what we're going to be doing, I promised it to you in the last episode, we're going to be talking about what is Shraddha. Shraddha in, is loosely defined in English as faith, but it is a lot more than faith. We are each born with a kind of faith within us. You will see that from children from an early age. You'll see a difference in their ability to have the following Shraddha. And that is dependent on what your previous life was. What your previous life was, what your karmas were. And I'll, I'll talk about that in detail because there's a lot that goes into making somebody's personality swabhava. Swabhava is his personality, his innate nature, his makeup, and his Shraddha. Your likes, your dislikes, also come into the Shraddha, which are determined by your previous lives and your current life to this point. So Shraddha, the word itself, means is, is a com combination of two Sanskrit words. One is Shraddha, which means truth, and the other is Dhatte. Shraddha, Shraddha is, Shraddha Dhatte means that which holds. So that which holds the truth is called Shraddha. Now, that which holds the truth or the reality is really your intellect within yourself. So it holds the truth based on everything it has learned forever, previous lives, etc. Shraddha, now here's the definition, long definition, if you need to write it down. Impressions carved into our minds and intellects from previous lives and previous experiences. It is a form of faith, which is consistent with following your purpose, determined following of one's purpose. The person who is carrying that faith is devoted to his path, is driven to achieve the end of his path and to the goal and determined to reach his goal. With Shraddha, this is still the definition, he conceives how to get to his goal. He continues onward on his path and he completes his path. Shraddha also, still continuing, includes the capacity to have thinking power, ideas on how to reach his goal, in this instance, self-realization, the ability to reflect on those thoughts and ideas, to absorb those thoughts and ideas and convert them into action, to take information that would help him to get to his goal and to use it. He regards the Supreme Being, he reveres the Supreme Being, and ultimately he realizes the Supreme Being. And so that is Shraddha. Now, Shraddha is 
since it is so reliant on previous experiences, previous lives, etc., you can now just automatically recognize that it is an expression to a certain extent of your vasanas. Now, what are vasanas? Your present vasanas are a result of what? Result of your past lives, past karmas, past desires, past actions, all of that result in logically, right? You have a past desire for something, you die. That desire continues into this present life. You still have that desire. And you have your current karmas, whatever you're doing, your current desires, your current actions. All of these go into producing your present vasanas. Your present vasanas and your life forces from before result in your, pre per your innate nature. Your innate nature your inherent tendencies, your leanings, your likes, your dislikes, and your inclination. So that is that is the way in which Shraddha is formed. That is the way Vasanas are formed. That's the way likes and dislikes are formed. Now, verse 3. The Shraddha or faith of every person is in accordance with one's nature. Right? We just said that. Your nature is a certain way. Your Shraddha is in accordance with your nature. And here's the key part that you must remember. A man is made up, a man or a woman, is made up of this Shraddha, faith. He is what his Shraddha is. Important. You are what your Shraddha is. A person may be born with a certain talent or, or like a, a prodigy, right? Somebody who's excellent at music. And I've read a lot of these stories of people who are very good at music. But if that person is good at music but never picks up the musical instrument that he's supposedly so good at, he's never going to get good at it. So Shraddha is important even if you have these innate qualities. These innate qualities require Shraddha to be able to sit like Beethoven or Mozart on a piano for his entire childhood from an early age to learn to practice. It's not that it comes automatically to them. Because he still needs, his brain says, I know these tunes, I know the music, I know this, very comes very easily. But he has to get the motor, the fingers to follow the demands that the music makes. So he may be born with great talent for music or sports, right? But he's a prodigy, but the talent alone is not enough. He has to practice daily, that's Shraddha, regularly putting in effort, wanting to get to a goal. Without Shraddha, the talent will not shine. With Shraddha, he has consistency, a goal, a drive, a determination until he reaches his goal. Shraddha is impressions carved into our minds and intellect from past experiences. So about our personality, you are born with a certain nature. This is because of our previous lives and karma. All human beings have faith. All human beings have Shraddha, right? Because you say, I want to get into a plane to fly from here to somewhere. You don't go and check who's the pilot. Did he have his proper training? Is he drunk right now? Did he renew his pilot's license? You just go and sit there and say, I have faith that he's going to take off and he's going to protect me. You go to a restaurant. You don't know who the chef is, what he's put in your food, whatever. You just take it on because somebody told me that this restaurant is good, you go there. You don't know what your teacher is teaching your children, but you send your children to the school. And you keep an you have faith, but you're also looking to make sure. So all human beings have faith, all believers. We are all believers. But the question is, are you a sattvic shraddha, rajasic shraddha, or tamasic shraddha? Depending on what we got from our previous lives, we are born with a particular type of shraddha. These are impressions carved into our minds and intellect from our previous experiences. We live on faith e without even seeing the pilot we board the plane, etc. We cannot verify everything before we move forward with anything in life. We cannot. Some things you can. What I am depends on my innermost convictions, my faith. We get transformed if our convictions get transformed. Not religion, but faith. So this is important thing to consider. Yes. Then verse four, the sattvic worship 
the gods, the Rajasic worship the Yakshas or the demigods, the and the Rakshasas, the demons, and the Tamasic worship the ghosts and other spirits. So there are three types of people who worship. Each directs his Shraddha towards his deity. So in ancient India, where this Gita was written 5,000 years ago, people worshipped um, worshipped demigods. People worshipped ghosts and demons, did black magic. I don't think that happens anymore. Lou, you might know better. <laughs> yeah, there's a little of that going on, but there you go. It's not so, as popular as it used to be. Yeah, so there were tantric worshippers. There were people worshipping black magic, and they actually did a lot of things. This is what mythology teaches us. I don't know how far that is true. But what he says is that Krishna says, if you're sattvic, you're, worship, you're going to worship gods. And there is only in Hinduism only one god. But Brahman, God, has many powers, and each power manifests differently. So somebody may, so knowledge is worshipped by some. God also produces different kinds of things that we consider wealth. Some people worship that. God has many different manifestations. Each one is produced as a demigod. So what um, Krishna says is that some people worship those demigods instead of worshiping God as Brahman. Right. Um, so a sattvic person worships Brahman through his many manifestations. You, at that time, could just worship nature, trees, the sun, right. the wind, the ocean. Or you could worship Lakshmi as wealth. Or you could worship knowledge as Saraswati, etc. Now, one thing that we had in the past, I've never heard of anybody worshipping Kubera today. There was a demigod in Kubera who was dwarf-like, dwarf -like, very small, distorted, deformed, but the wealthiest god or person in the world ever. And a lot of person, people used to worship the demigod Kubera. So he, Krishna says, if your worship is towards wealth and power, you're rajasic, your shraddha is rajasic. If your worship is towards goodness, then your worship is sattvic. If your worship is towards even worse than uh, demigods, then it's purely uh, tamasic, mm -hmm. that you're worshiping the worst that the world nature man has to offer. We can talk about that soon. So rajasic people worship two kinds of uh, depending on how rajasic they are. Are they rajasic on the upper side or rajasic on the lower side? Yakshas are dwarf-like goblins. Kubera, the god of wealth we mentioned, ugly, deformed. Rajasic belong to those two categories. Those who are more evolved and those who are less evolved. The more evolved rajasic people worship the yakshas, demigods, as an end in itself for wealth and power, not for enlightenment, but for wealth, like Kubera, or power. They're happy if they make money or if they have power. The less evolved Rajasic people worship the Rakshasas, the demons, like Ravan. They lead a material and sensual life. They have no idea of spiritual ev evolution, and they worship what is opposite to gods. The Tamasic, on the other hand, are deluded completely deluded, ignorant of Brahman, ignorant of any of these scriptures or whatever we're talking about. They live a languid, irresponsible life. They're ignorant of any faith. Um, so devtas are sattvic. They're sublime expressions of supreme reality. Um, the lowest level of such forces of nature and humanity, all negative, they worship murder, murderers, terrorists, violence, killing, etc. Their faith is very tamasic. Mm. So each one of us, friends, have all three within us. It's a matter of which one you try to inculcate, which one you try to encourage. You have Shraddha in you that is Sattvic. You also have it that's Rajasic and Tamasic. I have a person that I used to know uh, before I moved here to Boston. Every year, once a year, she would throw a party with religious tones for religion. 
Uh, and she would make sure she invited the most powerful and wealthy people. And she would tell everybody, guess who's coming? Such and such is coming. Oh my God, he's so powerful. He is so wealthy. And the whole party, religious function, you could see her eyes going again and again to the door to see if such and such had arrived. And when that person came, she would jump up from her prayers and run to the door and then announce to everybody, look who's here, look who's here. And it seemed like her focus, her focus was more on the people that she was entertaining, bringing in than to do the actual religious power. So there was no question at that time in my mind that this person had a very rajasic slash tamasic um, shraddha. And it's very, very true because you could see that even in her disposition and her way she treated other people and um, her conduct of her life. Yeah, she, so prioritized her, she prioritized her status and her ego. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It was not so much about devotion to God or Brahman, but more towards devotion to somebody who she thought would maybe transfer some of his wealth and power to her, which never happens. <laughs> so in verse 5, Krishna talks about our faith getting expressed in the world as our actions. We do our actions based on what our faith is. Our conviction, on the other hand, is expressed in our body as emotions and thoughts. Those who have rajasic or tamasic shraddha, they don't have a hundred percent faith in scriptures or maybe not even the law or police or judges, police, etc. They have only faith in money, power and wealth. So if you see a sign that says wet paint, such people will touch the paint <laughs> to say, is it really wet? If you see a sign, don't walk on the grass, they will walk on the grass. If you see it says, turn off your cell phone, they will forget, quote unquote, to turn off their cell phone. And they need to be reminded during the lecture, please turn off your cell phone. They disregard the scriptures. They perform very difficult austerities to gain power. They do pujas, they do worship, they go to temples, all to gain wealth and power. Um, they put a lot of attention, effort, etc., to acquire that wealth and power. They put their bodies, their lives, their minds, their intellect to extreme hardship to attain wealth and power. They become arrogant and boastful. Their energy comes from two things, according to the scriptures, from kama and raga. Kama means desire and raga means likes or attachment. So their energy comes from kama and raga. Who see me, hear me? Yes, it's cu cutting out a little bit, but stay with it. It'll probably come oh, back. Okay. Yep. So their energy comes from karma and raga. So when you say, hey, I have to ask you something. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. They have no energy to get up, say. But if you said, hey, I have a deal for you. You can make us some money on this. There's something available for sale. Yep. Why would you would you come for a meeting with this wealthy, powerful man? They jump out of bed. They get dressed. You can see energy in their eyes. They have a lot of energies. I give you an example of a person, two people actually, I took with me initially to the lectures when I was studying, to lectures of the Gita. I said, you have to listen to this. This is so fascinating. They both fell asleep in the lecture. <laughs> and I was shocked. They were just, they, they didn't have the energy to stay awake. This was so boring for them. So they have no energy, no, no ability to do anything when it comes time to doing something sattvic. But when it comes to rajasic, wealth, power, then they have a lot of energy. So without karma, without raga, is comes sattvic uh, energy. So there's no desires for something personal, no likes, no attachment. This is good, not only for the person who's following you, but also for society as a whole, because whatever you're doing, you're doing not for yourself, but for others. So friends, that's up to five. Now, next time we'll do verse six and seven, which will conclude Shraddha. And then you'll find it very interesting that Krishna talks about how to better yourself, how to improve your intake, not just of food, as I said, but 
intake of words, things you see on TV or things you hear, things you smell, things you touch, all of these sensual things, if you are careful about what you take, that's ahara, intake. Then what kind of austerity you practice, what kind of uh, donations and charities you do, sattvic or otherwise, what kind of uh, prayers you say, all of these things matter. Um, and we'll talk about that. And this is one very practical chapter from here on to the end. So I hope to see you there in episode uh, 185 onwards. Lou, any comments, any thoughts? No, it, it's interesting how we're going to apply some of this knowledge that we've gained throughout our travels so far. Uh, it's already interesting. And these these are more psychological points, uh, something we're more familiar with. So this will be interesting how we can learn to apply it. Thank you, Lou. Yep. See you next time, friends.